good parenting news. Yay. Submitted by Wes with a chest. Mm. Mm. Mother of two CEOs and a doctor give advice on parenting successful children. What do they know? Two CEOs and a doctor? That means you just raised some psychopaths. Yeah, what are you talking about? That's like underachieving though for an Indian family. Oh, I know. Yeah, that's not much. You're a hell of average. Get the fuck out of Two failures and a doctor. Yeah. Two yeah. CEOs. What are they CEO of? If it's not a billion right. dollar company, yeah. nobody cares. Yeah. I'm the CEO of my own S Corp. That's right. <laughs> There's only one person That's in the true. company. <laughs> it's, yeah, me. So it's me. In every email, I put CEO of Davis O Company as a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one boy. So she's the mother of Susan Wojcicki, who's the CEO of YouTube, YouTube. and Wojcicki, yeah. who's the co founder and CEO of 23andMe. And Janet Wojcicki, real who's Damn. a professor at University of San Francisco. Oh, so it's the mom. They're huge. Awesome. Yeah, the All mom right. is you know the what? So Her name is I take, Esther. I take back. I'm ready to listen. Are they, they grew up in NorCal, right? I think so. I'm ready yeah. to listen to what she has to say. Let's do it. Yeah, so she says that her entire parenting style is off of these values that she calls trick. So it's trust, respect, independence, collaboration, and kindness. And this is already a conflict them. of interest, <laughs> by the easy. way. That's too easy. This is a conflict of interest because we shouldn't be interviewing the parents. We need to interview the kids. Exactly. Sure. They're not pieces of shit. Where the fuck are your kids, huh? Watch the hell And how happy they are. She right. wrote a book. That's true. So she wrote a book. That's a good point. Thank, Thank you for acknowledging. Because I agree. I want to hear from the kids, too. So she wrote a book because a lot of people would always ask her like, oh, you know, like, how did you raise such successful children? And so her book is called How to Raise Successful People, uh, Simple Lessons for Radical Results by Esther Ojitsky. Oh, because that's the mom of the other two? The three, the three. sisters. Oh. The two CEOs and the doctor. Got it. Seems like a yeah. good way to capitalize on yeah. children's success. She tricked us. Everyone got tricked. It's just a family. What did it stand for again? Yes, Trust. Trick. So trick is trust. It's another word for prostitute Respect. on the street. Trick. Trust. Tricking. Respect, Respect. Independence. Independence. Collaboration. Kindness. Yeah. So I could break it down what she says down. for each one. Let's do it. Well, first let me show you a photo of her daughters. Also another term for prostitute. <laughs> break it down. Yeah, so trick. these are all the sisters. I don't have a they didn't know of that. Esther. Though. They were protected. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> That's why they're so successful. They didn't know prostitution existed. <laughs> they don't know what a trick is. Yeah, you fucking trick. Yeah, so first is trust, right? It's that she writes. I also got some back, I got some extra questions from an investigative person. How many total children did she have? Because if she had 50 Ooh. children, <laughs> and one three sucks. out of 50, that's a bad percentage. I bet you they have a little David So too in that family. They're just not showing the runts. Because yeah. there could be 47 failures. We didn't even know the statistics. We just want to find the hole in this right now. <laughs> There's a lot of Asians here. We, 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 like, we want the numbers. Yeah. Trick, this is what you do. I believe she only has three kids. Three kids. So she's batting 100%. Yeah. Three for three. Uh, Here's the trick. You have a lot of kids and make them compete against each other for your love. Oh. And then now they're damaged and for the rest of their life, they don't know what they're competing for, but they always need to chase something. Let me tell you the breakdown of what oh, she writes. Okay. So trust, is, she says, we are in a crisis of trust the world over. What? We are in a crisis of trust the world over. Sorry, I couldn't read. Um, parents are afraid and that makes our children afraid to be who they are, to take risks, to stand up against injustice. Trust has to start with us. When we're con confident in the choices we make as parents, we can then trust our children and take to take important and necessary steps towards empowerment and in independence. She said that from the moment her kids were born, from babies, yeah. she always treated them like adults. I refuse. I agree. I That's agree. why we gotta stop baby talking. We don't baby talk yeah. with Taika. I, I just we baby me. talk with each other. <laughs> 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 yeah, but your brains are developed now. Now you know. The yeah. shit that we say to each other when we turn the R's into W's, we never do that with Taika. That's good because I read that that actually slows the yeah. progression 100%. of speech development. Yeah, I agree. Ooh, I want to yeah. teach my kids slang then. Hey, fool. Yo, good morning, no. blood. <laughs> this shit litty. I know. What's up, cut? <laughs> Alright, so for respect, she writes, the most fundamental respect we can show our children is to sh is toward their autonomy and individuality. Every child has a gift 
and is a gift to the world. Mm. And it's our responsibility as parents <laughs> to nurture that gift. I agree. Whatever this is beautiful. Be. This is the exact opposite of telling kids who to be, what yeah. profession mm. to pursue. So she's so anti-Asian parenting right yeah, now. Yeah, mom and dad. There's two billion people on this planet that, that would disagree <laughs> with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah so okay. she's saying it's it's about I supporting them as they identify and pursue their own goals. That's, That's so nice. Like, oh, I like yeah. it. I, respect I have a question. As she's reading this, I'm now thinking about my own parents and seeing if they fit this mold. And they suck. It huh? sounds like they they have. They have, yeah. but there should be one last category called ass whooping. Yeah, yeah. dude. Where you get your ass beat for any time that you don't do trick up ass whooping. I'm waiting for Jack Ma's parents to write some shit. Oh, that'd be tight. Yeah, but I'll get there. So first, let me tell you independence and what she writes about that. So independence. Don't help them out at all. Independence relies upon a strong foundation of trust and respect. Children who learn self-control and responsibility early in life are much better at bless you, are much better equipped to face the challenges of adulthood and also have the skills to innovate and think creatively. Absolutely. True that makes independent sense. kids are capable of coping with adversity, setbacks, and boredom, all unavoidable aspects of life. They feel in control even when things around them are in chaos. I agree. That's dope. I like the uh, being able to deal with boredom. Boredom. Because yeah. that just happens in life, and if, you, if that frustrates you, it can be debilitating. Yeah. You should not be bored as a kid nowadays. You have unlimited porn all the time. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the tip of your fingertips. I'm surprised kids aren't sleeping more. I know. I'll be napping all the time if I had this one. <laughs> it's like, God damn. Like, dude, David's always sleepy. This room oh, smells funny. Ew. That, was, that was a funny joke. <laughs> All right, so for collaboration, she says, collaboration means working together as a family in a classroom or at a workplace. For parents, it means encouraging children to contribute to discussions, decisions, and even discipline. Oh, fuck. There you go. That's what we're doing. Uh, in the 20th century, when in the 20th this century, this this like, like, mommy's get, been bad. I like that. Me. You're grounded. Go to your room with your. Listen, boy. listen here, Mary. We gotta collaborate on this, okay? So what do you think you deserve out of like what you did wrong? Yeah. You know. What no. Realized? By the way, like, my parents never ever really got in my face unless I deserved it. You wow. believe you deserved all of it, so yeah, you yeah, felt yeah, like 100%. it was justified. One hundred percent. That was but, like, pretty when collaborative. I, when I would talk to my like, like I'll never forget this. I was in first grade. I went to my buddy's place named Frank. I won't, I won't drop his last name. But <laughs> they were like, we were like getting ready to go somewhere. Getting ready in first grade? Damn. <laughs> no, like, I don't know. Like, no, like, like put on your <laughs> shoes, like that kind of whatever. Like, <laughs> grab your action figure, like get in the car. <laughs> yeah. Cute. And he was getting rushed. So then he told his mom, he was like, I'm going to push you down the stairs. Like he just said, automatic. To and his mom? To his mother. Is he a white kid? Yeah. Of course. Of course. It course. sounds yeah, white as fuck. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> and so, like, and, and I think I verbally said that. I verbally said it. And my older brother's 10 years Why older than me. Lollipop. So, like, obviously, I'm so like I'm seven. My brother's 17. So, like, oh, my parents shit. used to yell and like chase my brother around the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember coming home and oh no, you didn't. I was actually getting ready for, for Taekwondo. And you kicked him in the face? And I'm trying to tie my shoe. And I couldn't tie my shoes, because I was an idiot. So, my mom's like coming over, and she's just like, we're, we're late. And she starts like tying it. I'm like, no, no, I want to do it. And she's like, no, no, we, can't, we don't have time. Let me do it. And then I just go, mom, if you don't let me tie my shoes, I'm going to push you down the stairs. And like, oh, even before oh. the, she knew what was coming out of my mouth, just Boom! Nice. Like right across the face. Ooh. You're like, it doesn't work! And I was like, <laughs> shit! I'm never like listening to my friends again! Yeah. Every colored person that had one white friend had that white friend that ruined their own life. Ruined their fucking lives. Yeah. You thought it applied to you. Everyone, and then you go, we're not the same. Sir. Mine was, we're yeah. Mine was, I'm running away. It's like, oh, really? You're gonna run away? Yeah. Take this shit with you. What? 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 That's funny. Yeah. All of my white friends, so why don't you pack this ass open with you, huh? In elementary school, their families was pretty white trash, so they got beatings until I went to junior high, went to a Christian school, and that was the first time I saw like a Rebellion. nice little Christian family. And the way that they <laughs> dealt with shit was very different. Yeah, of course. They were like, okay. We used to call him Gainer. That was his last name. Gainer. Uh, what happened today, whatever. He would, he would get in trouble, and then he's like, yeah, my parents just talked to me about it. And we were just, we had a How long conversation. How level-headed that person, huh? That's great. He was really calm, yeah. but he would get fucking picked on, though. Well, that's why he's a little bitch. Yeah. See? <laughs> that's why he's a little bitch. <laughs> he was my friend, but he looked like the Matt TV kid. Oh, oh shit. Like, 
like, oh, like the actual logo, you know, not like one of the. You know yeah. what was so dope? Getting beat up by my dad was that <laughs> <laughs> he would beat my ass so bad that when I would get when people would, when I would get fights in school, this is only in elementary, yeah. it didn't hurt that much. Yeah, that was one yeah, really cool awesome? thing. Yeah, because you get hit by a bat by your dad, a little baby fist isn't gonna hurt. <laughs> like it's whatever. A bat and a baby fist. Yeah. Damn. All right, so continuing what she said on collaboration. Like Working that. our shit yeah. through this thing. Yeah. This is therapy. She said, uh, in the 20th century, when rule following was one of the most important skills, parents were in total control. In the 21st century, dictating no longer works. We yeah. shouldn't be telling our children what to do, but asking for their ideas and working together to find solutions. That's so, tight. So for kindness, future. which is the last one, she says, it is strange but true that we tend to treat those who are closest to us without the kindness and consideration that you we- You tell that to my girlfriend! We extend to strangers. <laughs> That's like, true. Why, she treats you the best and treats strangers the worst? She treats me the worst compared to strangers. That's exactly what she's saying! What? You didn't what? listen. But they're saying to avoid that, right? Yeah. No, so she said that we tend to treat those who are closest to us without kindness. Yeah, yeah that's why he's saying. Yeah. That's why he's agreeing with me, and that's why yeah. I thought so Mariel needs this. He's putting her yeah. on blast. Yeah. yeah. We just yeah. talked about that. So then she says, parents love their children, but they are so familiar with them, they often take basic kindness for granted, and they don't always model right. kindness as a behavior for the world as a whole. Real kindness involves gratitude and forgiveness, service towards others, and an awareness of the world outside yourself. It's important to show our kids that the most exciting and rewarding thing you can do is to make someone else's life better. See, all these ideas sound great. I, I like love it. them. I, I, but I will fail at every I single one. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah, we just well, need like, reminders. But like, you know what? There's too many, there's a lot of wrenches in life. Yes. And that's the thing. It's about being consistent. I heard ranches. You know what helps? There's a lot of ranch too. <laughs> is when you're the most vulnerable and you're not thinking straight and you're on autopilot, yeah. you need these things in your face no matter how obvious they are. Yeah, it's the same thing with everything, right? Like when you're in a depressed state or whatever it is, like we're, we're thinking more like an animal and, and selfishly versus uh, someone that should act intelligent and someone that should be a role model or whatever. Because I know I have my bad uh, habits and go-tos. Like, so if I'm caught off guard and I'm angry, like I might yell at the kid or I might do a different form of abuse that I'm like, oh yeah, I got my ass beat. But it's gonna transfer through. When you're at yeah. the most vulnerable, you're gonna treat whoever close to you in that same light. So it's like, if you could keep this in front of your fucking face every time you're in that place, that's when you need it the most. Get it tattooed. But you know what's gonna happen when you're in that place? You're gonna see trick in front of your face and you're gonna grab it <laughs> and throw it out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah.